Uh, uh, go, go ahead. What are you talking about? You can't see me because I'm behind this tree. Uh, I can still see you. Skidoosh! Welcome to the magic show. I am the great Samboni, and this is my assistant, Mr. Dale. Hi. Chris. Be quiet. I have him in his shelter in place at a maximum distance of social etiquette and distance. In this bag, I have an object of great mystery. It is a cube of Rubik. In this bag, I have an object of great mystery. It is a cube of Rubik. In this cube, there are 43 quintillion possibilities. But today, we will solve it. In this bag of mystery, you put it in the bag. You count down from three. Let's all count down together. Three, two, one. The bag has been solved. You smell that? That's right. And now, for my assistant Dale, for something amazing. Hi, right, I want to show you our toilet paper recycler. See, the bag is empty. Tear up the toilet paper. Drop it in the bag. Now we fold it up, and it's going to recycle the paper. Tear it open, and there, it's restored. That's the toilet paper recycler. That was amazing. Now, who's ready for one more trick? have a standard deck of cards. All of the cards are different. Can you see? I thought so. Now, you just say when to stop. Stop. Not you. Oh. You were watching. You know what? I will just pull one random card out of the deck. It is a four of hearts. This. I will put back in the deck. You just say when to stop. Right there. Right there. Oh, Locked in the box. I will take this and I will put it back in the hat. Like a cat. When you count down from three, your card will emerge. Go ahead and count down. Your card has been returned. Pull out the deck of cards. And I will take all these cards that are red on the back. And I will drop them into my box of mystery. Some in there. Some in there. Some in there. And the rest, guess what? In there. And bring the camera over. So you can see that the box of mystery now, all the cards are blue. Look at you. You've participated. Skadoosh. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's me, Sean. That's right. I am the great Zamboni. Shh. Don't tell anybody. Now, we're going to teach you how we did our tricks. Some of them are very difficult and you cannot simply do in one sitting. Some of these tricks literally take months of your life to, co to complete. But I figured you guys have plenty of time right now so you can learn some really cool things. First, uh, this trick with the Rubik's Cube. Now, I will tell you that this was an actual Rubik's Cube. This was not a trick cube, anything like that. Regular paper bag. Notice that I put a question mark on the front. That builds a little mystery. Now, before I show you any of this, everyone raise your right hand. Good. Now say, I promise 
not to share the secrets of these magic tricks with anybody unless my parents tell me because I have to respect my parents and I don't want to disobey them. Good. My definition for magic is seeing or experiencing something so amazing that you can't take your eyes off of it and you can't explain it. So, the Rubik's Cube trick. This is a regular old Rubik's Cube. You can use a bag, you can go behind your back, you can do anything you want. I like a bag because it creates mystery. Now, doing this trick means that you have to know how to solve the cube. And this is where the months of work come in. There's no trick to this. This is literally like three months of my life. Ready? You take the cube, you put it in the bag. Are you ready for this? Because this is where things get crazy. Put it in the bag, give it a shake, and open it up. And what do you see? That's right, the cube has been solved. Now I'm not gonna tell you how, to, how I did that. I can tell you it's not an illusion. It's a lot of muscle memory, it's a lot of memory, and you have to know how to solve the cube first. Once you know how to solve the cube, you learn how to solve it really, really fast. All right, who's ready to learn how to do the paper bag toilet paper trick? For that, Mr. Dale is gonna need to show you, so head on over there. Okay, first you need two paper bags and some toilet paper. Okay, the first bag, open it up. Second bag, tear a little bit off the top because we don't want the whole length. And then, then you take one piece of toilet paper, put it in the first bag on the bottom. You take your second bag and Put it in there. Now make sure the tops line up. And then twist it. Fold it again. Fold them up. And it looks like you have an empty bag. So show them the empty bag. Good. Then you take another piece of toilet paper and you're gonna tear it up. Now you gotta tell them like, toilet paper is really expensive nowadays and it's like very precious. Very now precious! You, yes. <laughs> now you tear the paper up, little pieces, and then you drop them in, and we're gonna close it up, fold it over. Say so now we're gonna recycle all the toilet paper. Shake it up. All right, grab the bottom and open it, tear the bag open, and voila, it's recycled. Now you can use it again. Good job. Okay, now I'm going to teach you guys how to do a very simple card trick. This is real easy, and once you know the secret, people are going to be amazed. For this, you're going to need two decks of red cards. Take the second deck and set it aside. We'll go over that in just a little bit. We're going to learn how to force a card. So you're going to need ahead of time to select whatever card you want to force. For this trick that I'm going to show you guys, let's use the card that, we, that the great Zamboni used in his trick. Who can tell me what that card was? Who remembers? Who said the four of hearts? Okay. So for this trick, we're going to use the four of hearts, but you can use any card that you want. Okay. So. First thing you want to do is make sure that the four of hearts or whatever card you're going to force is on top of the deck. Put it on top of the deck, okay? Now, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a fake shuffle. This is because everyone wants to know that the cards are shuffled, they're not in a particular order. Make sure when you're shuffling them, you do this. Just make sure that that pile right here in this hand goes down last because you know that, that four is still on top, okay? So put them together. This takes a little practice. But once they're shuffled, you can shuffle as many times as you want as long as that card stays on top. Then you're going to have them either tell you when to stop or give you a number between 1 and 52. Say they choose 30, then count 1, 2, 3 until you get to 30, right? Make sure that card stays on top though and set that pile aside. Or they may just go like this and say, uh, tell me when to stop. And you stop and you set that top pile aside or you set it down 
and you say cut the pile in half and they'll come and go like this. Okay, you're going to take the bottom pile and you're going to start shuffling them until they say stop. Okay, now whenever they say stop, here's what you're going to do. Show whatever card is on the bottom. Don't look at it. They look at it. But in this case, your audience is going to see the eight of spades. So the card on the bottom in this instance is the eight of spades, but you don't want to look at it. You just want to tell your audience, remember this card. Now this isn't the actual card that's going to do the magic, because remember, the card on top is the four of hearts. That's the magic card. So by telling them to remember this card, it's called misdirection, okay? Misdirection, that's a big word. That means, that means you're trying to direct their attention to this, but the real magic is happening here. I don't want to look at it, I don't want to see it. And then you're simply going to put it down here. You want to pick up the deck and you're going to flip it over just like this so you're looking at the bottom okay and you're going to go all right I'm going to find your card and you start going through and as you go through you're looking for what card not not the eight of spades that's right the four of hearts so you're looking for the four of hearts and as you find cards that aren't it you can just lay them down on the table those aren't it going through those aren't it and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going until you get to the four of hearts don't show them that you're looking at the four of hearts you're saying I think I found your card in fact I'm positive I found your card you're gonna take this and you're gonna lay it on the table just like that that is your card and then they and then you say by the way what was your card and they're gonna say not the four of hearts they're gonna say the eight of spades that was their card remember so you're gonna go okay have them flip it over is that the eight of spades and they go no and they're gonna think <laughs> you don't know magic and then you go ah what number was that the eight of spades you mean like this? And they're gonna go, <gasps> and then you go, that's right, magic. But I have this other box here. And in this box is but one card. Now this is where ahead of time, you took all the other cards out except for the four of hearts. So you say, I open this box here and there's only but one card. And you slide it on the table like that. And you say, wouldn't that be amazing if these two matched and they flip it over and then they go, double whammy. This was amazing. Now that's also amazing. It's the one-two punch. And they're gonna, then they're gonna go, <gasps> and then they go, how'd you do that? And then you say, a magician never tells his secret. And if it's your parents go, I order you to tell me. They go, well, if Pastor Sean, you watch this video, then he'll explain how it works. Because you always wanna respect your parents. Children, repeat after me. I will honor and obey my parents. That'll lead, that'll lead you to a very long life. All right, so that is how I did the card trick. Huh? Oh, you're wondering about this, how that worked. I can hear now, remember in this, I took the, 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 the cards and I just put them in the open slot in the top. I can put them all in there at once, but it builds better drama if you put them in bits at a time. And by the way, as I'm feeding cards into this, did you know that doing magic is not about the trick? Doing magic tricks is all about the performance, the story, what you're sharing as you go through this. What are you communicating? What kind of story, especially a Bible story. Tricks are great to share Bible stories with. Sometimes, you know, doing a card trick will help illustrate a lesson in a way that just talking won't. So work on your performance, not just the trick, but about how you present the trick. That's the most important part. Now that all of them are in there, what did I ask you to do? I turned it around, I come up. Now check this out, ready? Take a look. All the cards are blue. Side note. 20 something years ago when I started in kids ministry, I didn't know nothing. And I wanted to be super effective about teaching the Bible to kids.
So there was this person I knew that knew a lot of magic tricks. And I went to this person and I said, hey, can you teach me a couple tricks so I can, I can use these in my lessons? And guess who that person was? That guy right there, Mr. Dale. So Mr. Dale, thank you. Side note. Now that all of them are in there, what did I ask you to do? I turn it around, I come up. Now check this out, ready? Take a look. All the cards are blue. Oh. Wait a second. The cards are no longer there. That must mean that they are in here. Magic! The blue cards have reappeared. You may have to watch this video several times, again, for the Rubik's Cube thing. Look down in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow for our next daily update.